Hello all newcomers and welcome back fellow Eternians. Thank you all so much for joining me. Right now we are at six viewers already at the start of the stream. Thank you guys so much for checking in with me. Uh, let's see if everything is going all right. Hey, we're joining up. Okay, what's going on everybody? We got five viewers right now. I'm excited. Uh, uh, Sniffer46, I'm not going to say the full thing, said poop. Grand General Chrono said hello. Buckeye Republic said a. Lucy Anderson, new person to the stream. What's going on, Lucy? Uh, how you doing? She said hey. Uh, Abraham Rodriguez said chicken. Um, Lucy Anderson, is there something going on with the mic? Let me check out my stream settings here. Audio input. But default. Let's try that. Is that better? Can you guys hear me all right? All right. Hey, what's going on? Can you guys hear me all right? Um. Uh, Lowe's boy said crabs, and then he said thumbs up. What's going on, Lowe's boy? How you doing? It's always good to see you in the chat. Um, okay, so today we are going to be talking about micronations. And specifically, we want to talk about what it is that makes a micronation work and grow and develop, and what makes some shrink and stay stagnant and fail. So that's our big thing today. We're going to be trying to discover what makes micronations work and what makes micronations not work. So if you want us to review your micronation while we're talking about all this and point out uh, pros and cons of how your nation does things, definitely let us know. If you want to argue for why your nation's uh, way of going about things is the best way in the world, definitely let us know and send it our way. We will review it and talk to you about it live on stream. So check us out. Right now we are getting into this chat here. Let's check everybody out. Okay, so um, we got Lucy Anderson with the cat in the box. I appreciate that. Uh, also, you have the character from that new Disney movie. What is that? I, I forget the... I, I don't keep up with all the Disney Pixar movies now. Uh, President Kennedy of America here. Say Grand General Corona. What's going on, President Kennedy? How you doing? Lucy Anderson said slightly better. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not hooked up with a great mic right now. I could go plug in. Uh, Meme Stealer said I can hear you. Uh, Kingdom of Hertzia said you're reviewing nations again. I sure am. Uh, what's going on, Meme Stealer? They said hello again. Grand General Chrono said we hit 140 citizens. Congrats, dude. That is awesome. Um, is that through your Discord? I saw uh, in the America Discord. This is what we're talking about, Grand General Corona. Uh, otherwise known as President Kennedy, he has a Discord where they just apparently reached 140 people. That's awesome. Uh, Soviet Weeb says, hi, what's going on, you Soviet Weeb? How you doing? Uh, Lowe's Boy with the beautiful pink hair picture right here says, total dictatorships make me... Oh, total dictatorships make micronations work. And that is actually true. A lot of the time, the most successful micronations are some sort of monarchy, some sort of... Uh, single ruler state and we're going to talk about all that and why that makes micronations work but it ultimately is their size and the ability for someone to control production uh, on a small scale Kingdom of Hertz here said I'd love a review uh, well we'd love to hit you up just send us a link in the chat to your website to your micronations YouTube channel something like that and we will check it out for you uh, meme stealer 69 said we may or may not have a micro porn industry that how do you have a micro porn industry like wait let's talk about that so I get a like a porn industry right so you have like a like a website or whatever a micro porn and that just seems like a porn industry because there's like amateurs right so like i imagine i imagine you just you just be a part of the regular industry you know what i mean like if you start your own like garbage collecting business you're not like we're a micro garbage industry or whatever you'd be like we're a part of the that industry you know what i mean uh sniffer said ooh Federal Social Stimuli Party Republic, or, all right, whatever. Uh, we came here from Cafe Dullahan. Uh, what is uh, Cafe Dullahan? That's cool. Lowe's boy said, 
admins might be here. Uh, so the weeb said, oh yeah, whack, better not mention my alt, whack, I'm puns alt. Grand General Corona said, my nation is a republic, we are succeeding right now, I am currently running for re-election. That's awesome. So, what makes you feel successful as a, um, as a republic? Um, because a lot of the time for micronations, the thing that really halts them when you're talking about republics, when you're talking about um, whatever it is that you're, whatever type of government that you're dealing with, you have to deal with a small number of people and getting those people to effectively come together and produce and to time and time again bring about effective results, a lot of the time has to come from strong leadership. And many of the times that strong leadership is found in monarchies. A lot of the time, the people who start these micronations ultimately become uh, sort of the figurehead in the face of their nation because they're the one who started it. They're the one who recruited the first citizens. So therefore, a lot of the time when they're looking for leadership, when they're looking for guidance for how the nation should be run and what the soul of the nation decides uh, the, the nation's morals or, or ideas about certain laws or cultures or or practices may entail, that all comes from the founder and their beliefs and their ideas a lot of the time. So when you have a republic, that can be a little murkier and that can be something harder to decide because you have a very small amount of people that are voting on these very, very large issues. So you may have something that is very heavily controversial and a large part of the government that is decided by two out of three people, which may not make that one third happy at all. And if that one third decides to stop working uh, or decides to stop helping, that is a huge dramatic decrease to your effectiveness and your efficiency. So a lot of the time, these monarchies tend to stay tighter together and stronger together because they don't have that same worry. They don't have the worry that, um, you know, we're going to fall apart because of a disagreement because ultimately that monarchy is described as one in which the monarch has final say. So people going into it understand that expectation. Now there may be coups, there may be things like that, that are also troubles for monarchies, but a lot of the time republics you can see and democracies, you can see these things more and more frequently because of the um, confrontational nature of the society uh, and of the government type. Now, in a larger and larger scale, that works better and better because you get true, sensible uh, power coming from the hands of many, many, many people. So you need these things that are representative of those large groups of people, and democracies and republics work great. In smaller form, though, it seems harder to do. Uh, so that's what I'm wondering. For you, what does an election mean? What does... Uh, what does development look like as a republic? Do you guys just vote on things and that's basically it? Do you get together and work on these projects that you vote on? What is the thing that drives you? Um, Kingdom of Hertia, would micro wiki pages be all right? Sure, yeah, that would be fine. We've done some micro wiki reviews before. Uh, Vidley Bop. Boop said, E, what's going on? I'm glad to see you here, man. Meme Stealer said, sparking some serious discussion here. Fair point, though. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're trying to get your opinion, though, too. Let us know. Um, I really feel like republics and democracies are great as far as uh, large-scale government types are. I think the United States, uh, Great Britain, uh, are wonderful examples of these, where uh, even places like Sweden... Uh, Denmark, republics do well, they produce. The issue comes in when you have uh, smaller groups, when you have, like I said, just a few people that are the controllers and drivers of the nation's future, it becomes hard to tell them no. But if you come in as a monarchy, if one person owns the, the means of production, so to speak, if one person runs the show and says, I am allowing you to work, and I am, I am asking you to join me in help to create this thing uh, that 
will fall under my name, will fall under my, uh, my empire, my nation, it is easier for people to understand their roles and to move forward. It's understood what's asked of them, so long as the leadership is of good quality. Ultimately, it comes down to good quality leadership, no matter what type of government you decide on. But that being the case, monarchies with good governance and good leadership a lot of the time have less cracks than democracies with good governance or good leadership, so long as the number of people are small. Uh, once you get into larger and larger settings, the cracks in monarchies become deeper, whereas the cracks in democracies are very even and spread out. So a democracy is kind of like sand. Uh, a few pieces don't, uh, don't really hold together very well or do very much, but many, many hundreds of thousands, millions or billions, uh, may form very, very complex, fluid shapes that can be very, very versatile in their uses, whereas uh, monarchies are uh, like welded structures. You know, they are great for uh, whatever you intentionally, originally intended them for. Uh, they're great at doing that one structure, but once you try and expand beyond that, once you need to morph it or change it or adapt it to sustaining, say, larger weights, uh, more population, more intense demands, it's rigid, it's fixed, it will start to bend and break and show its flaws, uh, whereas that sand can take the impact a lot more easily. Uh, but that just depends on the scale that you're talking about. Uh, Nicholas Randler said, next Apex, and then Lowe's Boy Looks. Um, Buckeye Republic said, uh, back. Should I link uh, that? And then Lowe's Boy says, links don't work. Uh, Sniffer said, Ponderosa Hills. Meme Stealer said, check out that. Uh, Soviet Weeb said, Nick made it once, I think. Uh, Soviet Weeb said, on Google Sites or something like that. Um, Grand General Corona, well, we are having a great economy. A lot of people are running for political offices currently. My administration is very strong, and in many ways... Oh, no! No! Um, my administration is very strong in many ways. Nicholas Randler said, Andrew Corona, King of New Fourth. Nice, what's going on, Corona? Um, why did you take Corona from my... Uh, from me. That's very interesting. Uh, insulting. Lowe's Boy said, I'll be right back. See you, Lowe's Boy. Uh, Sniffer said, remember Andrew Carter. Nicholas Randler said, oh gosh, Stein. Meme Steeler said, great man. Soviet Weave said, indeed. Um, Sniffer said, I remember when I almost married him. King of Hertzia said, here you go, mate. Uh, and then, I don't see the thing. Oh no, I don't see the thing. Alright, well, I'll look it up. Don't worry, Kingdom of Hurts yet. I'm looking you up. Hertzia. Herzedia. Herzedia. Kingdom of Herzedia. Hey, you guys have a YouTube channel. Why didn't you just show me your YouTube channel? Democratic Socialist Kingdom of Herzedia. Alright. Uh, the Kingdom of Herzedia, more commonly known as Herzedia, is a micronation located in Oregon, United States, with territory in Rhode Island, United States. It is made up of five provinces in Oregon and one territory in Rhode Island. All of Hertzia's claims are in North America, with its borders touching the United States of America. It is located approximately 40 miles from the state of Malanova and the province of Austinian Stan. Austinian Stan. 
belonging to the United Provinces of Natlin. Hertzi is an absolute monarchy as of now, and it's member of the micro. It is a member of the Micronational Assembly. The current monarch being a councilman in the organization. That's wonderful. Okay. Let me ask you this: How are you? Uh, well, how are you a democratic socialist kingdom? Because a kingdom, especially with the government type of absolute monarchy, does not seem to be democratic. It seems to be quite opposite of a democracy. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to know how you justify your name. Uh, etymology. Hertz, Herzedia was invented by the current monarch of the Micronation and has no direct ties to anything intentionally, although the German word for heart is hers. Uh, Hartedia. History. The Kingdom of Herzedia was founded and declared independence from the United States on March 25, 2018, on the basis of the monarch's disapproval in the United States Politics Society. There is no current constitution or bill of rights yet written, uh, but a declaration of independence does exist. Uh, foreign relations, military, no economy, no economy. You got, you gotta, you gotta hit up your currency is the U.S. dollar. Okay, well that's that's part of it. So this micro nation is young. Um, I definitely respect them. Let's hit up their anthem. What's their anthem like? Let's drop that in. Okay. Hold up, we got we got busted back. seven likes. Thank y'all so much. This makes me feel so patriotic and ready to tell y'all thank you so much for watching. We got nine current viewers. We're about to need that nine likes with it because I appreciate y'all so much. We are just vibing out to this music and trying to help y'all to get through it with Herzedia's anthem Unify uh, on 99.99 FM AM DC WE3 from the entire time. All right, cool. So, yeah, hit me up. Uh, the monarch's name is A.Y. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's an absolute monar uh, monarchy. Uh, Herzedian is the way that you say their people. Uh, established March 25th, 2018. Population 6. Uh, U.S. dollars is their currency. Uh, and their national animal, animal is the green heron. It seems very interesting. Uh, I do think Herzedia is very young, and I think one of the interesting things with watching them grow will be how they choose to go about that. As of right now, they're pegged to the U.S. dollar. Does that mean they will eventually break free from the U.S. dollar and create their own currency? If they do decide to do that, how will they go about in instituting that currency? We notice they are described as a democratic socialist kingdom. Democratic and kingdom, as I said before, seem to be a little bit contradictory, but what I'm interested in is that they talk about socialism. Now, when starting a monetary system, it may not be best to, well, I disagree. I, I think depending on how you structure yourself, you very well may be able to be socialist. However, you have to make sure that you can afford as the state to distribute money out to people or resources out to people um, initially before you would start your economy. In a lot of completely capitalist or mostly capitalist societies or mixed economies, um, we see that these economies are generally based around the idea of credit. And so that credit can be applied initially from the government. The government saying, hey, this is worth this amount of money, um, this amount of resources. So because we own all these resources, essentially what we're doing is we're saying, hey, this voucher is an IOU for some of our resources. So if you ever want to return something for some of our resources, you just hand us this and we will let you have that resource. Uh, the great thing about that is that we come to realize that this 
this thing that they're able to do is able to quickly jumpstart their economy and allow them to actually lend credit through their own worth uh, in order to stimulate their economy. A socialist nation, if initially starting an economy, would probably have to start out with some larger pool of money that they could then flow out to their uh, citizens who could then in turn use that through their labor and uh, inflate the economy that way. But that is something that's particularly difficult to do. Uh, we have nine viewers. We had jumped up to ten for like half a second. We also got nine likes. Thank you guys so much. I am feeling the love right now. Uh, Meme Stealer said, great man. So Weeb said, indeed. Uh, Nicholas Randler said, I used all my Google money on a JJ video. That's pretty cool. Well, you should you should use it for the Empire of Eternia's Discord. We do a uh, Discord uh, Patreon. We do have a Patreon. We had our first Patreon uh, patron a while ago, so thank you very much to Baron Andrew Carter for that. Um, and we are going to be checking pretty quickly to see if we have some more, because I really, really appreciate that from all of you. Nicholas Randler said, I used all my Google money on JJ Video. Uh, Sniffer said, remember when I almost married him? Uh, Kingdom of Hertz, he said, here you go, mate. Nicholas Randler said, I can marry people. Uh, Soviet Weeb said, marrying yourself is legal in Orentia. Uh, this is the best stream for micronationalism since Cool Barbie. Thank you. I've never seen that. I hope it's cool, though. Comrade115 said, you can marry a dead person in France. Can you? Can't wait. Cute Google today. Also. Can you marry a dead person in France? Became legal in France by Article 171 of the Civil Code, which states, The President of the Republic may for serious reasons authorize the solemnization of marriage if one of the spouses died after completion of official formalities, marking it unequivocal consent. So essentially, the president, though, the president has to authorize it. So if a spouse dies after the completion of official formalities, uh, it's considered consent and the president is allowed to approve the marriage. That is insane. I did not know that. Y'all taught me something new today. And that's how you run a micronation. That's how you run any nation. You, you let people posthumously marry, apparently. Respect, though. I hope that's helped people, I guess. I don't, I don't know many situations. I could see some situations, I guess, but that's sad. Uh, I currently have a 100% approval rating. Hold up. 100%. 100% right now. Hold on. So we're going back. No, you can only marry a dead person if they're your fiancé in France. Uh, Daniel said, folks, what's going on, Daniel? Daniel's the coolest person here. Oh, we got 10 viewers. We're needing those 10 likes to go along with that. Look at that. I, know, I see you out there not liking the video yet. I know what you need. You need to go on, wiggle on up to that little like button right there and just go, boom. Oh, we got it. We got it on the stream. We got it as we, oh, and then they left. And then they left. Like a, like a dick. Making me feel like a, like a, like a dick. All right, we're moving on. We're going back to these comments. Uh, so you should watch Cool Barbie. Have a 100% approval rating. I don't believe that. Nicholas Randler said, I don't approve. Well, I don't care what you approve of, Nicholas Randler, but I do care about you. I hope you're doing well. Meme Steeler said, my approval rating was 100% until ANCAPs came along. What is that? Uh, Anti-capitalist, I guess? I don't know. Grand General Corona said, 100 people votes yes on the approval thing. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, and I hope everything is going well in America. Nicholas Randler said, my approval rating in POSAF was 45 during Prime Minister. Congratulations. That's impressive. Grand General Corona said, 40 citizens recently voted. A2. Congrats. Uh, Daniel said, how long is chat delay? As long as you want it to be, uh, Daniel. As long as you need it to be. Nicholas Randler said, like 50 minutes. Uh, it can be three hours depending on the uh, Eternian 
Andarian time zone, but I think Eternian. Comrade 115 said it's not too far off. So Weeb said Corona sounds slightly like a dictator. Hertia said, uh, apologies for the fact that it's a democratic socialist kingdom. Uh, King of Hertia said, kind of stupid in my opinion. Uh, why? Why did you name it that? And why do you feel like it's stupid? Nicholas Randler said, ew. Nicholas Randler said, unbased. Corona said, Chrono is my RP name. That's cool. Sniffer said, shut up, you're literally a rightist. Wait, does that mean right winger? I am a classical liberal, green conservative, right libertarian. Please review Elysium. Look up Empire of Elysium in Google. Should be the first link thing. I'll do it. I'll do it. Elysium. Is that how you spell that? Nope. Elysium Empire of Empire of Elysium or Elysium is a federated constitutional monarchy. Ooh, I'm impressed that your shit shows up immediately on Wikipedia. Uh, that that's nice. Empire of Elysium or Elysium is a federal cons federated constitutional monarchy consisting of seven regions, all of which are located within the contiguous United States of America. Legislature, Grand Senate is unicameral and only has one branch known as the Senate of Elysium. Let's click on that. Biddy. Uh, we're going down. We're going down into this into this system here. Uh, do they have anything about economics? No, they don't. Why don't they get some economics? I need it. Some economics. Uh, Soviet Weeb said Wattis gang. Comrade 115 said leftist libertarian gang. Nicholas Reynolds said Elysium tried to stock puppet micronations. Stock puppet micronations. What do you mean? Like, just make fake micronations? Uh, Sniffer said, imagine being a wannabe, right? I don't know. Daniel said, stock puppet. Uh, Nicholas said, imagine having... Kim Hertzia said, I made this page a very long time ago, and I can't change the name of the page. Oh, no. Well, um, you should get someone who can do it. Daniel said, don't blame it on the nation, blame it on the people that would fall for it. English Randler said, Kingdom of Hurts here, go to wiki on Micronicky with Discord and ask an admin to change it or do a redirect. Kingdom of Hurts here said, alright, thanks. Uh, and then they said, no problem. And then they said, A, B, C, can I become a stream moderator? No, you can't. Soviet Weeb said, I kind of want to say, look up Federation of Arintia. Uh, look up Imperial Federation. Vox Populi scandal. Vox Populi scandal. There we go. That's what you asked about, isn't it? This is what you wanted to know. This is the secret sauce. Well, we're going to get into answering that for you right now. We're going to get into this secret sauce. You're the boss. Netflix live stream. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, we got 12 viewers, 12 likes. We got 11 viewers, 12 likes. That's not fair. We were about to get into the secrets of the Empire of Elysium. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm going to expand my screen just a tiny bit so y'all know how serious I am. This is the Vox Populi scandal that we're talking about right now. This is, this is pretty serious. We're talking about that Vox Popular scandal right there. So... Elysium made headlines in early 2020, uh, early January 2020 after an anonymous source leaked to the Melanian press claimed that the top Elysiumite government officials were plotting to exercise control over their allies by coercing them to join an organization. The so-called leaked document, hold up, in January 2020, so it's like a recent ass thing, uh, Source leaked to the claim that Elysian government officials were planning to exercise control over their allies by coercing them to join an organization. The so called leaked document contained their master plan to masquerade their so called alliance as a democratic way to bring the community together. But once members joined, they cheated into the fold, intertwining their legal systems with that of Vox Populi and being given a narrow legal pathway to leave the organization. This scandal, in addition to other election scandals, led to Tao's departure which dealt a significant blow to the mortal, moral of the country, morale of the country. 
Since the scandal, significant reforms have been made among mounting pressure from the intermicronational community to act upon the problems of Elysium. As a result, Elysium garnered a battered reputation from this incident. A few people, both within and outside Elysium, call for the abdication of Robert II, with some suggesting that a coup of protest should occur. Ha, uh, that's crazy. In some recent news, Kyle Smith is wanted at the principal's office. Kyle, you're going straight to jail. No, Kyle Smith reform was re-elected. This followed after reformist and progressive coalition, the national coalition, not the state one or even the city one, winning a massive majority of the Grand Senate, 12 out of 15, that's a number, uh, following uh, this Elysium sign. Why didn't you just say four-fifths? Why didn't you just say four-fifths? I guess because you wanted to show how many people were in it. Following this, Elysium signed a treaty with the Grand Republic of Leo. Furthermore, Elysium is seen recent unexpected growth, leading to many people to predict the nation's population will soon hit, soon hit 300 citizens. Overall, despite a hard start for 2020, Elysium's da na 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 a na 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 golden age, na 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 golden age. Golden eye, they got golden eye. There is no economy. There is none. There is zero economy in this entire thing. Look at all these people. I'm going to list off a name of people who could have totally, totally become uh, people to create an economy and just didn't. We got 13 likes, 10 viewers. Y'all about to hear this. Y'all about to hear in this. Okay. Sir Riley. Emperor's hand, time and position, 40 years, could have totally, at any point, just been like, hey, let's create an economy. Taylor, Taylor, now you know he's a prime minister. He was a part of the Vox Party, so that just ties directly into what was supposedly, hold the fuck up, hold the fuck up. This was supposedly a scandal and their supposed master plan. This dude was just in the party that it belonged to. Okay, anyway, he was in that bit a year. Uh, Kyle could have also, Kyle of course could have made uh, an economy. You know Kyle, shredding it on the skateboard, killing it at your mom's house. Kyle, really coming into the game, never creating economies. Poor guy. Kyle, chancellor for like 3,000 years. Tao, Chancellor, twice Libertarian, both times. I don't know what's going on with Tao, but he left at one point. That was crazy. Now, Kyle, Kyle's the realest one. He's in there again for some reason. Kyle, get out. Uh, he's a reformist. Been in there three months. He's an incumbent. He just wins every time. You know Kyle's killing the game, killing it in your mom's house, getting those jello pudding pops, whatever he needs, Kyle gets it because Kyle pulls it in. You know, that's really what we're talking about here. We're not talking about micronations. We're talking about Kyle is what it really comes down to. Uh, Lowe's Boy says, I'm back at it again. And we're back at you, Lowe's Boy. Uh, Jingle Snitter said, we need something to replace it. Oh, I was trying not to say your name, but I said your name. Lowe's Boy said, imagine you have on the WIP, I don't know what that is, on the main article of your micronation, Kingdom of Hertz, has said, so yeah, I'm just a kingdom. I made the page a long time ago and didn't think about the title of the page and can't change it. I'll be taking to a micronation admin, a micro wiki admin about it soon. But let's check about out your YouTube channel. We're going to go in and check out the Kingdom of Hertz's YouTube channel. Herzedia. Kingdom of Herzedia. There we go. They got four subscribers. Kingdom of Herzedia. They had changed their whole fucking flag. None of these have anyone's face in the anthem of Cordania. That's a place, I guess, within it. And also south, you know, is also a place within it. They made a lot of flags. They got four subscribers. They're killing the game. And guys, if you like them, you should help them out with these subscribers. Because y'all should try and grow micronations. You know what I'm saying? Kingdom of Herzedia, they got four subscribers, but tomorrow they're going to be at four million. So wake up your eyes, guys, and see the real conspiracy. The Herzedia doesn't have four million subscribers right now. Come on, guys. What y'all doing? 
Uh, King of Herzedia said, I appreciate the feedback. Soviet Weeb said, Red Links. Nicholas Wrangler said, Has gotten old. Uh, is Has WIP because the page in it isn't finished. Um, Cole stopped being mean. Work in progress. Yeah, I don't understand why that's a bad thing. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Why do I need a last name? You do need a last name. And Moxfell Fox is here. And Baron Andrew Carter. Uh, yes. Meme Stealer said necrophilia. Ew. Uh, ooh, we're, we're going through a lot of stuff here. Hold up. Hold up. We got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, the USA overruled the attempt to extend mail and ballots for the Wisconsin election. Can you review the Federation of Orentia? Sure the fuck can. Sure the fuck can, you guys. Also, if you wanted, you could totally hit us up. That's right, you could totally hit us up with what? With what? That's right, with what? I'll tell you right now. It's the subscribe button. That's right, if you guys can subscribe, you know what that means? We grow a little larger. And when we grow a little larger, we pass that on your way. Because the Empire of Eternia's motto is, the Empire of Eternia. When you need us most, we're going we're gonna to just show up. We're just going to surprise you out of nowhere. You, you, think, you think you got like 5, 10 minutes till we show up? No, nope, we're right there. Like 30 seconds in. Like, I'm talking, you start hitting the buttons and we're there. And you're like, how did we get here? And I'm like, we've been, we just knew. We just, honestly, we've been chilling in a bush over on the side. But we're trying to come in. So, you know, get ready for us. Empire of Eternia going from one subscriber to one million subscribers. Three days. That's our that's our message to you. Alright, and we got nine concurrent viewers. That just killed our entire viewership. Thank you guys very much. Uh, and I appreciate that. But we still got a majority of them. So we're, we're killing the game. Um, Daniel said, we're conducting elections in a week. But what Daniel doesn't realize is I am going to sabotage those elections. And ultimately win them all. Grand General Corona said Q, RSTUV, WXY, and Z. Lowe's Boyd and tell people not to go to the election. Kyle says, Kyle, go to the principal's office. Uh, wait, we're looking at Federation of Orentia. Federation of Orentia. Give me one second, you guys. Whoop. 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 That's how you do the touchdown dance for your Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame speech. Jesus. Alright. Uh, look up Face of Leon Montan. And I sure will. Face of Leon Montan. Because y'all know I can't do anything that the, that the internet stops. Alright. Uh, why is this just on there? Ponderosian statement, Statesman. So there's just so many memes about this kid. Apparently, there's three. There's three memes about this kid, but he's apparently the most popular kid on the internet because he's cool. Oh boy, I sure like my vacation to the Bosnian city of. Don't put my city under siege. What? Was this kid alive in 1992? Were you alive in 1992? When were you born? July 2006! Oh boy! I hope, this is a conspiracy. This guy is saying he alive in 1992 and 2006. Which is it, Leon? Which is it? Because my first thought is that you're lying to me and you're actually 45 years old. So, Leon, make up your mind. Are you going to 8th grade? Are you going to go to the prom with with Jessica Smirnofferston? Or are you going to be 45 working at the car wash with a dude named Daniel who's in the chat over 
here? So yeah, that's the real question. That's what I'm asking you today. Make up your mind, Leon. Get, get an education. Be a real boy. All artist propaganda said the election should be postponed. Uh, read the page, face of Leon Montana. No one cares about that. Soviet Weeb also said, everybody's saying Leon. Everybody's talking about Leon. What? Who? What does Leon do? What is Leon? What, what even is Leon? We're real we under the Federation of Arentia because Leon thinks he's so important. Ooh, Leon. 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 I'm going to keep saying your name, Leon, till you arrive in this chat and bless us with something new. Leon. Tell us why you all in this chat and why everybody loves you, Leon. Leon. <laughs> I'll this propaganda. The same thing will happen in all of the rest of the states, especially for the presidential election. All art is propaganda likes to make propaganda that is art and art that is propaganda because he's an edgy cool guy and everyone loves him. Now, Lowe's boy said Google face of Leon Montan and read the micro wiki back. Nicholas Randler said everyone disliked the relike in 10 seconds. Well, everyone should like and then love and then heart and then subscribe to the Empire of Attorney because that's what we really need in this bitty. Now, if you're new here, we appreciate you, we love you, and we need that one subscribe in this bit. So go ahead, drop it down, like like you know you need to. Just do a little bit of double dutch in it, flip it over like a pancake, fold it in half like a sandwich, eat it like you would a burrito, bite it straight on the side like a candy cane, and smash that subscribe button. Alright, uh... We need Leon to go viral on Reddit. We need the Empire of Attorney to go viral on Reddit. Whose side are you on? We don't even know Leon in this chat. We, Leon, looking like a fucking cat man out here. Leon being cool. Leon having all the friends in the 8th grade. Oh, Leon. Leon got 12 followers on Reddit. Leon killing it. I don't know if that's how Reddit works. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. uh, which is <laughs> Leon? Daniel said, "Flood the chat with flood the chat with read the article face of Leon." Comrade one fifteen said, "Leon thinks he is so cool. Does he have his own religion? Didn't think so." Uh, Leon's coming here. Uh, look up Zarel. Yeah, he dies. All right, I'm back. Read the page. Hold up, is that you, Leon? Is that Leon? Is that Leon right there? That better not be Leon. It's me, Leon. What's up, Leon? Leon, which is it? Tell us. Tell Leon Montan thought. Look at that. That boy, he's killing the game. Absolutely, 10 out of 10. This guy is also Leon Montan. Look, look into his eyes. Leon, this man sees you. Leon, this man sees into your soul. Breathe into this man's eyes, Leon, and know that he is here for you. Alright. So, <laughs> Soviet Weeb said, Pun what I thought. Uh, it's 8S Leon. It's, it's 8 Leon? What? It's 8 Second Leon. Face of Leon Montan. I, I'm so confused. Alright, so... They were originally an imperial era, 23 days, okay, so they were a republic, and then 23 days after the creation, Punwada decided to pull, who the fuck is Punwada? Oh shit, it's Punwada. Oh shit, it's Punwada. This man's name is Punwada. What a clown drinks. Pun water. <laughs> I can't be roasting out here. This, this is the roast of micronational leaders. What? What a clown drinks. Pun water. Leon Montan. More like. More like. What a cool and awesome guy. I appreciate you, Leon. You're, you're just the best ever. I can't hate. But pun water, I'll shit on all day. No, nah, not really. Pun, you're, you're, you're also dope. Just, y'all y'all are cool. Alright, second period of dormancy. Punwada became inactive in the building of Arantia and slowly forgot about the mi micronation. 
Not much is known about this period. Uh, although this era de jure lasted five months, it's de facto, it de facto lasted one day. Uh, Punwada formed the Grand Republic and invaded the neighboring kingdom of Bedroom Land. My guy showed up in someone's house like, Where's your money? Pun, please, where's your money? <laughs> Pun Wada, no, where's your money? <laughs> We're in the Bedroom Land. He just throws a flag on your bed. You're like, pun, please stop it. Pun's killing it. Hey, yo, y'all gotta stop. Y'all gotta stop uh, flirting with pun. Pun is... Pun is six years old. Pun is six years old. Y'all gotta stop. Pun went to second grade yesterday. Y'all gotta stop. Y'all chill, boy. Government politics. RNC is classified as a hybrid regime. As presidential elections are almost always rigged and corruption is common, the most popular ideologies are centrism, conservatism, and anarchism. Civil rights and LGBTQ rights are often debated, although no conclusion to the argument has been reached. So LGBT people in, in, in Punwada's land, in Orientia, are just like... Is it... It's Orientia. Interesting. Federation of Orientia. Nice. Uh, capital is Huai City. Largest city is Las Critis. Official language is Tinglish, English, Thai, Eason. Ethnic groups are Thai, Eason, Orientian, Russian, and American. Religion is Buddhism. Dimonym is Orientian. Government is Fedai, semi -pre Federal Semi Presidential Constitutional Republic. What's semi-presidential? What the fuck? Semi-presidential dual executive system is a system of government in which a president... Pun just stomping on my my governmental knowledge. Pun like, I went to second grade yesterday and learned how to run circles in your micronation. My name is Pun Wada. What do you think? A semi-presidential system of dual executive is a system of government in which president exists alongside a prime minister and a cabinet. Okay, so they also have the prime minister, so it's a semi-presidential system because the prime minister is also like similar to the president, and then there's also the cabinet. Okay, so the president actually does less in that system, just in general. That's pretty cool. Uh, Punwada, you, you got the shit out of me. Business palooza, big business palooza, said pun. That was weird. Big business palooza showed up and left hard. Now, big business, let me ask you this. Do you got do you got some big business here in the chat of the Empire of Eternia's live stream? Because I'll tell you what, Pun Wada has got what you need. Uh, Lowe's Boy said, look me up. Oh, I've looked you up, Lowe's Boy. Don't even worry. Let's hit up Lowe's Boy. I'll hit you up right now. Low Boy. A low chest or table with drawers and short legs. Yeah. Wait, hold on. We have we gotta go to his wiki page. Wait, where's his Where's his wiki page? There we go. Okay. A low boy, low rider in British English, low bed in Western Canada and South Africa, or float in Australia and Eastern Canada, is a semi trailer with two drops in deck height. One right after the gooseneck, that good gooseneck, and one <laughs> right before the wheels, behind that good gooseneck. This allows the deck to be extremely low compared with other trailers. It offers the ability to carry legal loads instead of drugs, up to 12 feet, 3.66 meters tall, which other trailers absolutely cannot. Now, other trailers trailing your drugs will absolutely just fall apart, but these low boys will really get it done. We know low boy in the chat, he, he pulls anything you need. Um, with, which other trailers, of course, cannot. Low boys are used to haul heavy equipment such as bulldozers and industrial equipment. Now, there are all sorts of low boys that you can buy. You know, low boys that really come in off-road styles, low boys that come in, um, in, you know, really, really construction mode, you know, heavy duty, uh, protection low boys. You can, you can just absolutely go the wall to wall with low boys if you need to. And that's what a low boy is. Uh, I'm glad we were able to look you up low boy. I, I really appreciate that. Um, meme stealer. I want to look up big business palooza. That's what I want to look up.
Big Business Palooza. They just exist. They just exist. That's cool. Um, Meme Stealer said, Can you look us all up and rank us from best to worst? That's weird. No? Jinkum Sniffer said, Pun has been banned from multiple Discord servers for being too young. Yeah, he's three. Nicholas Randler said, My wiki page isn't done. Meme Stealer said, Scroll down on my page. There's an image of me wearing a cardboard box mask. Then don't die. Be careful in this corona age. Look up Colbert. Look up Nicholas Randler. Look us all up, because why not? Especially face of Leon Montan on MicroWiki. We did. We already looked it up. We already know Leon's entire life story at this point. So I don't understand why we have to keep going over it. Leon, we get you. We know that you are the greatest micronationalist in history, but you don't got to keep rubbing it in everybody's face. Leon, we appreciate you out here, but come on, man. You're not doing us any favors. Leon Montan. Yep. Here we go. It's your boy Leon with the baby foot on his face. What the fuck is that on his face? It looked like a baby foot. It's a baby foot. Yep, there's the baby foot again. Baby foot. Baby foot. Cougar or mountain lion. Baby foot on his face. Oh, it's three teardrops. I thought it was a baby foot. He's killed three people, not baby feet. Uh, Nicholas Randler said, look me up. Maybe I will, Nicholas. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll start with a control C on you. How about that? We'll C on you. And then I'll go control V on you. How about that control V on you? And then I'll say Nicholas Randler and I'll click on it. And it's this dude. It's, it's fucking, it's Nicholas Randler. The cool, in 2020, hold up, this is you actively. He's watching the stream, like. My guy's in here, my guy's in here, like, how's everybody doing? How's it? Let me have a, let me have a solid conversation with you, Nick. Let me, let me grab myself, let me move myself to right here so we can have a proper conversation. Let me, let me stretch out a little bit so we can kind of be eye to eye. Let me set myself up. So really get, all right, you good? Hey, Nick, how you doing, man? Yeah, no, I really appreciate you coming out today. You know, I just, yeah, I just, I hoped you could, uh, you could stop, stop staring at us all like that. You know, man, it's, it's just starting to get uncomfortable. Like, we appreciate you typing in the chat. I don't even know how you're typing in the chat without looking down at the computer or the keyboard for like three seconds. You've been on six different pages. You've been on the Discord. Still not looking down. We've been making direct eye contact this whole time. And it's honestly creeping me out, Nick. Nick, I appreciate what you're doing. You know, I know you work hard in it. I know you're micronation. What's your micronation? What is, what is it? It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, oh, fuck. It's, it's, oh, uh, what is it? Oh, shit. Oh, uh, fuck. Fuck. Oh, uh, fuck. Prince Nicholas the First of Posath. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, of POSAP, yeah, you're, you're, you're killing the game running POSAP, and I just, you know, I, I just really appreciate it, but my guy, you gotta look down, you got just for one second, I know everyone's afraid of heights, I feel, you know, I get it, you know, but we gotta, we gotta just look down for like one second, man, come on, just look down, come on, bro, it's important, it's important, Nick, man, Nick, Nick for real, bro, it's not even cool. 
All right, thank you, Nick, for participating in the live stream. We're just going to zoom in on your face as much as we can. That was about it. Uh, yeah, thanks, Nick. Everybody give Nick a round of applause and go check out POSAF and everything that POSAF does. I think we looked at POSAF a while back. Um, that's cool. Super cool. Uh, education. Early life in uh, Aberdeen Empire, Minister of Parliament. That's cool. Okay, so ooh, so Nick, that's actually a great question. This is a real question, Nick. Uh, Nick said, "Best conversation I've had." I really appreciate that, Nick. You know, you're you're a cool guy, and and I respect that. So good on you. I do have a question though, like a, an honest question. What what is it like to have been in uh, multiple different micronations? So on your micro wiki, it says, we're about to do a real interview, Nick. And I'm going to pull up your face, too, while you're talking. Uh, Prince Nick, uh, the first inside POSAF. Um, you said you were a part of the Able Dane Empire and served as a member of parliament. Uh, is also active. Oh, so you're currently active. Uh, an active citizen in Essexia and ran for parliament but lost the election. Um, recruitment operates Gum Sister Cities Project and uh, Lust is Leading Ferry Project administers the Gum Lobby. Gum Sister Cities Project. Which, which cities? Which cities? Ten cities being represented. That's cool. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, let me let me ask you this: What is it like being a member of multiple micronations? Because a lot of the time I talk on here about people getting more active in other micronations to help them grow and survive and to achieve more. Because you can do more with more people. How do you feel like being a part of other micronations has changed your views on micronationalism or allowed you to grow as a micronationalist? And not as a guy with baby feet on his face. Um, Meme uh, Steeler said, Haha, I love this. I'm a famous filmmaker. I swear, look me up. Uh, check out Soothing Ring of Fire, my 10 hour long film. That's absolutely insane, but I congratulate you. Uh, Nicholas said, hold up, I gotta pull up his face. Where's his face? There's his face. We got Nick in the building. Big rig Nick out here. He he pulls his weight in the game. We got Nick. Nick's over here saying, "What you saying, Nick?" I'm gonna I'm gonna wiggle you as you talk. Okay, so Nick says. Nick says, being in different micronations is cool. You just have to know how to split your time and stay committed. Postav is mainly my IRL friends, and Ableton is a community of people. It means it widens your view a lot, and how to take the community and my personal and my personal opinions. It changed those too. Uh, good morning, Your Majesty. Uh, how are you today, Your Majesty? Uh, hey, what's going on, Baron Andrew Carter? I appreciate you out here, Baron Andrew Carter. Y'all, okay. Nicholas Randall said, "Not now, Cater." Uh, I believe he meant Carter, but you don't talk bad to Nicholas Car uh, to to Baron Andrew Carter and Nicholas. He's cool. He's a Patreon supporter, so I appreciate it. Uh, Soviet Weave said, "I got kicked from the gum server for being too young." Uh, Soviet Weave, are you uh, are you uh, pun uh, pun water? Is that is that you? Are you pun water? Um, also, 
uh, Nicholas, that's really cool. Uh, sincerely, I think a lot of the time as micronationalists, we tend to get focused on our own micronation, but we forget that one of the best ways to build citizenry for our micronation and for what we're trying to do is by recruiting people who are already interested in micronationalism because they have their own micronations. Um, and a lot of the time, we can even, if we're you know in between micronations or if we haven't started a micronation yet and we're trying to get into it, join other micronations. I sincerely recommend that. And I hope that other people will start to recommend that as well to people who come to them when they're interested in micronationalism and wanting to start. I think you absolutely have to tell people, join an already existing nation, see how you feel about it, really work in the environment. Because if you can't make their nation work and you can't work toward making their goals work, how are you going to start your own nation from scratch and recruit other people who aren't them and aren't other people who are already interested in micronationalism? It's a hard pitch. So you have to absolutely help and kind of pay your dues in to learn things and figure things out in micronationalism before you go on and start your own because it just helps everyone involved. Um, it's a hard thing to do and helping others first gets you a long way and it also allows you to build relationships that you'll want right off the bat when you start your own micronation because people will help you out and people will come to support you because they know who you are and they know that you've been good to them. Uh, Nicholas Randler said, I can't spell. I think you're doing pretty good, Nick. Baron Andrew Carter said, good morning. Uh, uh, Soviet Weeb said, yeah, I'm pun. Um, Soviet, uh, pun, what, what happened to your, uh, your nation and everything what's been going on with it uh it looked like there was a whole bunch of stuff about it like changing government types like seven different times what's going on with that hit me up uh also what makes you particularly interested in um in uh the soviet era stuff um hit me up hit me up with your thoughts we got seven people right now we got 14 likes thank you guys so much and we're trying to get these new subs. I'm going to check to see if we've gotten any additional subs right now. We were at 615, I believe it was, at the beginning of this. And we are currently at 615. So we got to try and jump it up a little bit higher. We got eight viewers right now. Thank you guys so much for jumping in. And we're just trying to figure this out. Because one of the biggest things for my micronation that we've been trying to do, and I actually want to create a Google Doc for this, so that you guys can see it. One of the biggest things that I want to do is to go ahead and start designing a, uh, a plan for my nation and for the Empire of Eternity and what we can get out of that. So one of the biggest things that I want to talk about is us trying to create um, uh, steps that will allow us to improve our nation and to get to where we want to be. One of the biggest things that that means is developing uh, some sort of economy. Now that economy has to be run by citizens, but at first can be run by you. So ultimately we'll want to grow our citizenry, but it's not an immediate factor when starting out your micronation. You can start with one person. If you want to start a micronation, you can start it all by yourself. You just have to think these things through and figure out how you're going to make an economy that works with one person. Now, in addition, we are going to have, um, have to figure out how to develop that technology, uh, how to develop that economy, and with that comes technology. So within our economy, we are going to have these technologies that emerge and the technologies that we see will be things that are helping us to hone in on whatever our primary uh, export is so that's one thing that we are going to uh, need you have to look at your as we've talked about in other uh, other versions of you know, micronational economics and things, you have to figure out whatever your primary export is going to be, whatever that thing your nation makes, offers, good service-wise, whatever your nation can produce, you need to have that. And then you need to look at technologies that will make that easier and cheaper for you to do. Um, because taking away less of your time in running your economy allows you to focus on other areas of growth and making that economy larger and more easy to run. 
uh, from your standpoint, from moving further and further away from it, and hopefully eventually putting other people in charge of it. Um, technologies we are going to need to improve uh, as well. One of the biggest things that we are trying to grow and develop and understand is um, a a trade network. You know, um, the the biggest thing that we're doing essentially is looking at. Uh, three different ideas for expanding our economy. Uh, we're looking at a citizen-based approach, knowing that we need to have some primary export. If we're going to sell anything to anybody, we have to know what that thing is, and we have to make it well, which is where our technology comes in. It makes it easier and cheaper to produce higher quality goods and services. Our trade network ultimately is going to be something micronationally based, uh, that's something that says, hey, in order for us to sell things, not only do we have to have a good product or service and something that we can do easily, efficiently, and cheaply so that we can compete with others who may be offering the same services, but we also have to have a reliable trade network. We have to be partnered with other nations who want to buy our resources to develop their own primary exports or secondary exports and technologies and trade networks and things like that. So if they can get valuable goods from you, they can develop it, their own economies, and send those things off to others. Uh, but as of right now, you have to start that off yourself. You have to find some way to start that growth. So the first thing that our primary export is, is, and we will talk about this more in the future, but our YouTube channel. Uh, once we hit a thousand subscribers, we will start to produce uh, monetarily. And so far right now, we have actually had our economy jump started by having a Patreon supporter, which means that our YouTube channel has actually made a little bit of money through Patreon so far. Uh, thank you to Baron Andrew Carter once again. And that is citizen-based. That is a citizen, someone who wanted to become a citizen, paying taxes into us through the advent of our YouTube channel, through creating a YouTube channel and being able to talk with our citizenry and through Discord and stuff. Uh, we developed this Patreon, which acted as a tax base for us. And we had someone pay into that, Baron Andrew Carter. And again, I'm going to appreciate him just one more time because that has jump-started us off. That's somebody saying, hey, I appreciate what you do, and I want to be a part of your nation. So he's among the first people to get information from us about what we're doing and how we're developing. He's going to be one of the people who, as we continue to grow, if he continues to put into that, we're going to see that uh, carried through, that as this micronation becomes larger and more expansive, there will be more and more opportunities for him as a micronationalist because of his connection to us. Um, now, technology-wise, we're wanting to do things that make it easier for us to produce our primary export. Now, that technology will be things uh, based solely on our YouTube channel, such as lighting well uh, let's just say set technology that's anything that we need for the youtube channel lighting um, any sort of effect stuff microphones cameras stuff like that that's set tech uh, then beyond that you know just our channel we like to do creative fun science things so uh, a lot of that is for content uh, just what we make, you know, uh, our uh, aluminum smelter that we're going to be making, our forge, um, our um, coil winder, doing all of those things are things that allow us to uh, manufacture with different materials and uh, to create things that would have been more difficult for us to before. Um, so that's in content because we can pass that on to you all and give you new ideas and new abilities to expand your micronations cheaply and easily. But then as well, we also can do that for just our own technological purposes. Once we hit a thousand subscribers and we start regularly making an income from our channel, one of the things that we'll be able to do is start recruiting other people from the community to join in our videos, to pay them to be in these videos, and to have that become a motivator 
for expanding what we can do and in developing not only more content for the channel, as we'll see through the development of our technology, but also in what we can expand beyond our channel and actually start selling directly. So that will lead into a secondary export as well or secondary exports, things that are going to be not necessarily directly tied to the channel, but say we could sell aluminum ingots to people who want to make things. Uh, we could sell finished aluminum products to people who want to buy them, uh, such as coins, uh, custom design coins, um, different pieces of armor, crowns, uh, a whole bunch of different stuff. There are an insane amount of things that we can do, all from that really, really simple breakdown. And that's something that everyone needs to follow in micronationalism. Figure out what your primary export is. Figure out what you're going to use to expand upon that and develop it. Figure out how you can start it, your primary export, uh, who you're going to sell it to, what you're going to be actively doing, and make sure that works. Then upgrade and develop it with technology. And finally, develop that trade network so that it becomes uh, quicker and quicker to grow the abilities of your primary export and potentially allows you to invest in secondary exports. All right, so um, we are going to read some comments here. Uh, Nicholas Rand, uh, Soviet Weeb said, I got kicked from the gum for being too young. Uh, I'm pun, uh, Soviet Weeb said, most micronations change their government systems a lot during earlier stages. They choose one after a while. Uh, Meme Stealer said, that is good. Uh, Soviet Weeb said, and the name just is just became because I'm a socialist. Uh, that's cool. Okay. Um, Lil's Boy said, unless it's run by McGrath, Wegmat Wegma is a const is construction and agriculture based economy. That's cool. Um, have you guys been able to uh, uh, make some money off of your agriculture and off of your construction yet? Soviet Weeb said, we have a retail based one. That's cool. Uh, what do you guys sell? Do you guys have an online store? Uh, we have an online store. It is the Imperial Market. We haven't actually started selling products in it, but you can go check out our micronational map, follow us on Discord, subscribe to the channel and all that, and we're hopefully going to start selling some merch and some different stuff through that. Um, Comrade115 said, what is Eternia's option on firearms, and would it be interested in gaining some for national defense? Uh, Comrade115, Eternia doesn't really believe in uh, the need for firearms for us personally. Um, I live in the United States of America. The Empire of Eternia is based within the, the bounds of the United States. And because of that, it's interesting because I support people's right to firearms, but I don't think it's necessary for defense. Uh, within the Empire of Eternia, uh, I don't own any guns because I don't feel the need to. And uh, one, because there's a, a police force and a military force uh, that's run by my macro nation that I have uh, paid into to use uh, and to protect me, but and my nation, my property. But in addition to that, um, I am quite capable with uh, a lot of other technologies and with being able to develop uh capable defenses for my home and my property if need be. So I don't think an attorney and defense system would look like guns necessarily, is all I would say about that. Um, Lowe's Boy says military, Lowe's Boy says well, military, cool. Uh, not particularly. Uh, the Empire of Eternia doesn't really believe in wars or acting out in aggression. We would only protect our property out of defense and really as a last resort. We just want to keep people away from messing up our stuff. Uh, and we'll do that. Baron Andrew Carter said, I am friendly, leader of my own micronation, only okay, your majesty, I don't need no war, okay, your majesty, my own micronation, need peace, only okay, your majesty, now you know. Those boys said, I love guns, guns go bang, bang. Agriculture doesn't make money directly to the government. The largest company, Fuller Rustic View Dairy Service, is exempt from taxes because it's exporting. It's an actual U.S.-based company. Yes, but... Uh, I suppose that's the difference between an economy that actually grows and develops your uh, your government and your your nation versus having something in theory. You know what I mean? Like if your economy doesn't make any money, it's an economy, but it's a net negative economy, which is almost worse than having no economy. Um, in fact, it is worse, just by definition. Uh, Meme Stealer says, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Nice. Uh, so we got six viewers, 14 likes. 
I think I am probably going to go ahead and drop, jump off for now, you guys. Um, one more time, I'm going to just go ahead and show our chat and let everybody hang out here for a second. But yeah, I just wanted to tell everybody thank you so much for hanging out with me. I've really appreciated it. We have a lot more stuff going on with the channel. Um, I am going to be continuing to do videos based on our technology with our coil winder, with our aluminum melting, which has actually made some progress that I can't wait to show you about. Uh, and then as well, we are going to do some other stuff with more costume design, more development of our shed. We have a ton of stuff going on. And once this coronavirus stuff is over, the Empire of Attorney is going to be banging out some hits. So y'all get ready for it. I'm excited and I can't wait for us to hang out again soon. Thank you all for watching. Uh, as always, remember to like, subscribe. Uh, it helps us out a lot. And if you know anybody who you think would be interested in this, if you know any micronationalists, if you know anybody who would want to uh, support us, support the stream, support the Discord, the micronational community in general, uh, definitely send them our way because we really appreciate y'all uh, and can't wait to, to grow to that thousand subscriber mark and really make a mark on the micronational community. Uh, Lowe's Boy says, uh, however, our berry and construction companies do pay taxes and that's where our annual budget comes from, uh, besides my allowance. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, first off, so yeah, that does mean you have a net positive economy. Congratulations. Uh, and as well, that means that you can do some stuff with that. Um, it, it, micronations don't always have to spend money to make things and improve things. In fact, a lot of the time our creativity can get us around that. But at the same time, an economy is always good to have because when push comes to shove, when your micronation is floundering or is stuck or is having difficulties, money is the great mover and shaker. Money is the great, uh, the great lubricant. It will get things working for you. It will get things moving again. Uh, it just may be expensive. So that's why governments love to have a ready stockpile of money handy in case they need to throw it at certain situations. Uh, and Meme Stealer, I really appreciate you. Thank you all so very much for hanging out with me. Uh, and please, like I said, let people know about the, the YouTube channel. We're trying to grow the community. We're trying to get out here. And I want to make something that is uh, makes you all proud. Because this is a product of your doing. So if there's anything that you want to see, if there's anything that I can do, uh, thank you very much. And I will, I will keep my ear to the ground. Hit me up in the Discord. Let me know. But... Um, I just, I appreciate y'all so much, and I thank you for watching. I hope you have a good night, and I will see you soon. Peace.